Let's roll. This is Sports Rage. I am Gabriel Moranzi. The Thursday night throwdown has begun with the pimps, the players, the hustlers, the people, the bust them, and everybody else in between. Let's do this thing. We literally and figuratively are stacked on the program tonight. We're running the gauntlet. Drew Martin's going to step up and in. Uh, Drew Martin, parts unknown. He's on the road uh, tonight. I'm not sure where Drew is, but Drew's going to kick it with us in a couple of minutes. The Ranger Red Head, Cam Stewart in the house. We sent it to the strip in Vegas. Griffin Murphy steps up and in to throw it down with us. Mick Aussie's going to a, a banquet award dinner tomorrow night. <laughs> so Mick Aussie's going to join us tonight. And there is AFL football uh, in the overnight hours this evening for the, the hardcore degenerates. You like college football? So do I. We're talking about it with Brett Beard. Brett Beard, Heisman Trophy voter, steps up and in and joins us uh, this evening. Big card Julio, Julio Rosario in the house. Uh, tonight, Julio's best bets, and you know Julio likes to dip his beak into a little bit of everything. It's the calm before the storm uh, tonight. As, yes, there are games going on right now in the National Hockey League. Um, there's no NBA basketball uh, tonight, uh, but starting tomorrow, this is sort of like that. It's sort of like that uh, right around Thanksgiving in the football run where it's like, remember there was a day? It's like, all right, there's going to be a football game on pretty much every day right now for the next 90 days, <laughs> right? Once we got into that sort of that season, we're nearly there right now, all right? Like, yeah, it's a little light uh, tonight. We do have uh, the San Francisco Giants and the Arizona Diamondbacks that are coming up. For the record, I like the under eight and a half in this game. Um, we're in the second inning already, and it's a six and a half uh, right now. It's scoreless. Uh, the Winnipeg Jets have just scored on the Vancouver Canucks. It's 3-2 right now with 14 minutes uh, remaining. In a hockey game, that really doesn't mean a hell of a lot in the big uh, grand scheme of things. Although Winnipeg could get home ice advantage down the road in other series type of deal. You know, you always want to get as many points as possible. Vancouver's locked in. Everybody's locked in. Winnipeg, no, they're playing Colorado. But if they won the series, potentially they could get home ice later by winning this game tonight. Uh, Vancouver are playing some of their guys. They're playing their number one goalie. I guess they figured let's let's get them into a rhythm going into Sunday. And the National Hockey League in typical NHL fashion has been too busy screwing over Arizona and going to Salt Lake to actually put together the uh, the playoff schedule. Shout out to everyone joining us on Sirius XM Channel 159. we got a full house on the program uh, tonight. And this is the calm before the storm. So starting tomorrow, if you think about it, there's going to be games on every day, playoff games on pretty much every day. You know, there might be a weird scheduling kink along the way at some point in time. But with the NBA playoffs and the NHL playoffs, the NBA playoffs go to late June. The NHL goes to, like, mid-June. And here we are right now. We're in April. So it's going to be like a daily and a nightly thing. It's pretty cool. The first rounds are great, right? The first round, listen, the first round of the NHL playoffs is always great. But it's it's over the top now because of their stupid format. They have, the like, the better teams, the higher seeds play against each other. And I find that the NBA bracket um, is very, very attractive as well. Some really cool matchups. A lot of times the NBA playoffs, you look at the NBA playoffs, and you're like, well, well, we know this is going to happen. We know that's going to happen, right? Like in past years, it's just sort of automatic. It's not. Like you look you look at the potential matchups. Like the Philadelphia 76ers and the New York Knicks, that's a toss-up. And, you know, either team could win that series. The Bucks and the Pacers, that's a toss-up. Either team could win that series. The Cavaliers and the Magic, that's a toss-up. Either team can win that series. You get where I'm going with this? It's it's super competitive. You got Phoenix and Minnesota uh, in the West, the Mavericks and the Clippers. Like, you know, these are these are like coin flip series uh, that we've got going on here. Hey, hey you know, I tell you what, the Nuggets are favored against the Lakers, but the Lakers are going to give the Nuggets all that they can handle. And we broke it down last night with Paul Bovey. I agree with Paul in that Denver's going to win the series. Uh, but the Lakers are going to get their pound of flesh, all right? As in, they're going to cover some point spreads. Denver play close games. Denver don't blow teams out. And it'll catch up to Denver a little bit. They played a lot of basketball last year. That's the thing that you have to keep your eye on. One of the reasons why I think the Vegas Golden Knights are not the team to beat in the National Hockey League. But with that being stated, let's get down to business uh, there. There's two more games coming up. And these games do matter. Yes and no. I don't know. Because... It, it, it matters as far as the seeding is concerned. The L.A. Kings 
at the Las Vegas Golden Knights. The Knights are up by a point, uh, but the Kings hold the tiebreaker. They're both playing at the same time against winnable opponents. The Knights are hosting the Ducks, and the Kings are hosting the uh, the Blackhawks. I think they're both going to win. All right, they, Neither team wants to lose their last game going into the playoffs here. And not to mention, they are playing for something. But at the same point in time, so listen, a parlay is minus 176 or so. Uh, if you want to parlay the two of them together. I did. I was like, you know what? They're both going to win. But I don't know what they want behind the scenes. We, You know what I mean? So essentially is the... You you come out on top here if you're Vegas or LA, and you're playing the the Edmonton Oilers, and the Oilers will have home ice. So it's not exactly like oh yeah, this is like oh, yeah, we, you know, we avoided something, and the loser will get the Dallas Stars. Dallas Stars are a great hockey team, so I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're, the, I would imagine, I would imagine if you're Vegas you would want this more. I think if you're Vegas, you know, you've beaten Edmonton before in the playoffs. You figure, you know what, we could beat them again. We played them last year. We, we could beat them again. And I'm not so sure they will. I think Edmonton will beat them personally, but that's another story. That I don't think either team really wants to deal with the Dallas Stars, but like I said, you got to deal with Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl and the Edmonton Oilers. So either way, it's not a fun party for either team. Vancouver Canucks and the Predators are opening up their series on Sunday night. I'll be at the game, Sunday night, game one. We'll be sitting behind the net. We're fired up. We're excited. But I will tell you, the more I look at this series, the more I see just how dangerous Nashville actually are. The Nashville Predators have been one of the best teams in the National Hockey League since mid-February, and the Canucks have not. Um, Since mid-February, the Canucks' power play is ranked like 22nd or something like that. Since mid-February, the Predators' uh, power play is ranked fifth. Like, you could argue these are teams going in different directions, but the Canucks, like, didn't fall apart near the end of the year. They just sort of went into coast mode. And also, by the way, oh, yeah, the Canucks didn't have their star goalie uh, for basically the last month of the season, who is back uh, right now. So this Nashville-Vancouver series is going to be a real battle. Starts uh, Sunday night, then they play Tuesday night. Nothing's official. Like I said, the NHL playoffs are like a secret rave. You have to know when something starts. You have to be in the know. And um, word is, I'm going to tell you, the the Oilers are going to, everyone else will play on Monday night. The Oilers are going to play on uh, Monday. At least that's the word uh, right now. We've got an in-game under six and a half riding right now with the Vancouver Canucks and the Winnipeg Jets. There's 13 minutes left and it's 3-2. So not trending in my direction uh, right now. And the Winnipeg Jets are on a power play, and they're swarming. I'm amazed they haven't scored on this power play, to be honest. Hopefully, we can escape with the under six and a half here. I made the bet when it was 1 1. Let's roll. This is Sports Rage. Bring it. about the Otani story, this uh, this interpreter, uh, Ipe, you know, clearly was a problem gambler. I mean, he would be identified as that and beyond. <laughs> now, there are a lot of others that are out there. The timing didn't seem great. It seemed slightly tone deaf in terms of, you know, maybe now isn't the time to say it. But the sentiment itself, you have to agree with. You, you, you know, there is not, there's only so much a sports betting company can do, right? Newswire, only on Sports Grid. Throwbacks in white have now become the main uniforms in black and green as well for game green. Your contracts will be higher in five years because the ratings will be through the roof, people. Listen to me. Play games at 7 o'clock. Get more ratings. Make more money. It's simple, but somehow they're imbeciles that make this playoff schedule. I can't figure it out. The Early Line, only on Sports Grid. It's when he swung it easy at three-quarter golf swings, and he pretty much hit his number all the time. Dude, but when he hit something full, he hit it 20 yards over the greens at times. He's like, what are you doing? He's just smiley, happy, and 
a freakish athlete golf robot that's going to be right there winning majors for the next 10 plus years. It's amazing. Did you say he was smiling or smiling? Only on Sports Grid. I mean, they're still the best. They're still the champs. Everyone wants to crown the Celtics the champions, but that's not the way it works. They got to beat them. And, you know, they got to get through the East, which isn't going to be fun to begin with. Everyone thinks it's so automatic. If it's just Boris is kind of losing his power, if if whatever his tactics have been, yeah, move on. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. The Thursday Night Throwdown continues. This is Sports Rage on the Sports Grid Radio and Television Networks. The calm before the storm. We'll be back at it tomorrow night with the NBA uh, playoffs, elimination games uh, tomorrow night. And then, of course, the full slate of basketball on Saturday, NHL hockey playoffs on Saturday. And then there's no uh, turning back. Although, interesting stuff. And recall last night, right after the Miami Heat game, I was like, why are the Heat only two and a half point uh, favorites? And I got the bet in, and thank God I was able to get the bet out in the late night hours last night as we saw the reports of Jimmy Butler's injury starting to potentially be serious. As a, you know, because he got hurt, but he played through it. And now, of course, we get word that uh, Jimmy Butler is going to be out. And he's out because Kelly Oubre recklessly came flying in and I understand, listen, you're competing. It's a play-in playoff game. It is what it is. So I'm not I'm not calling out Kelly Oubre for playing hard, but it was kind of reckless. It was there's a difference between being hard and reckless. Came flying in, lands awkwardly, and Jimmy Butler's not happy uh, about it. As Jimmy Butler just posted on his Instagram at Kelly Oubre, we throw in hands, which means that uh, Jimmy Butler's not very happy. <laughs> um, about getting eliminated for the next couple of weeks due to Kelly Oubre. But I've said this in the past about Kelly Oubre. He probably right up there, if not the kind of the craziest dude in the NBA in the sense that there's other dudes that are might be tougher and stuff, but Kelly Oubre is that guy like out of white man can't jump that like hold on and he goes to the car and comes back with an AK-47 type thing <laughs> like he doesn't it's not basketball to him like it's like real life like there's countless instances of Kelly Oubre in the tunnel and stuff like that like you know I, mean, I remember he got into it with OG Ananobi a couple of years ago pretty hard too in the playoffs and OG kind of tossed him around a bit OG's another one OG Ananobi is like a geeky kid that has like superhuman strength you piss him off and he turns into like a kind of a crazy person. But Kelly Oubre is nuts for real. So I love you, Jimmy B, but Kelly Oubre will just shoot you. <laughs> so I wouldn't be threatening him. What's up, Cam? That's good. good call, like, he's Dave. not the right guy. He's not going to be scared. Like he, he, yeah. he's going to go, really? Okay. Like he's going to like, like he'll escalate it. He'll be like, okay, bro. Next time we see each other, it'll get real. 
and Ubre is just gonna like pull a piece or something on him. <laughs> no, you you bring up good points. When you watch Ubre, the guy's he's not playing with a full deck. Like he's very like he's off kilter, and that's the thing. Those it's are the like types of guys you have to worry to about. Him, even yeah, though he's yeah, in yeah, the yeah. NBA. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember when Chris Bosh, you told me this story? Like, dude, dude, hey, 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 don't dive so hard at me. You know, got money to make or whatever. Ubre's like. F you like I'll do whatever that, yeah yeah he just you're right it's everything's like probably personal and whatever and we've seen him before he can go absolutely bananas cuckoo crazy so I, I like Jimmy Butler as well but that's a that's a guy I wouldn't be starting with that's for sure Dangerous. that's why Kelly Oubre has been on as many teams as he has been yes. on uh, over the years he's a volatile person <laughs> but yes he's, he's he's a good player yeah you know, Kelly Oubre can bring it it's just as I you know like I said it was a little bit reckless I remember seeing the play when what it what had happened so Drew Martin's with us. He's on the road, but I think we're having some technical difficulties uh, with Drew. Uh, one thing here as well, I'll, I'll bring this up in a couple of minutes. We'll get Cam's hockey pick. So mm-hmm. the, the, the Kings own the tiebreaker over the Vegas Golden Knights tonight. They're, so they're both mm-hmm. trying to win, yet I don't know behind the scenes. So I don't think they're either team – I don't think either team will deliberately lose the game, you know, number one. So I think they both want to win going into the playoffs. But it's a unique situation. The team that finishes ahead of each other gets the Edmonton Oilers. So essentially, you're either going to Edmonton or you're going to Dallas. And if you're LA, I don't really think it makes that much of a difference. But if you're Vegas, I think Vegas would prefer to play Edmonton to play Dallas because they've beaten Edmonton before and they probably think they could beat them again. But we'll see how this plays out after when it's all said and done. But that's the stakes. The, the yeah, team, the I, higher seed, is going to end up playing Edmonton, and the lower seed will go to Dallas to get the Stars. Well, I think we both agree that the Stars are a Stanley Cup contender. I think they can actually win the Stanley Cup. So, so are the I'd Oilers, rather play. Though. Yeah, the Oilers are good, but I think Dallas is a better team. I'd rather play Edmonton. But then again, we've talked about this before. Like, I think a lot of analysts just say, oh, yeah, we want this one. You, you're going to play who you're going to play, right? And I just think Dallas is a more dangerous team than the Oilers, but they're both very, very good. I don't know what's going to happen in these games tonight. I will say, and there's always a but, but the da- everyone criticizes the Edmonton Oilers for their postseason failures. The Dallas Stars have the same problem. Mm-hmm. They haven't won a Stanley Cup in a long time, and they've had a lot of postseason failures. The yeah, Ad have won some series, but they haven't won the Cup. And like with this unit... Right, you know, we have to go back, uh, you know, a while to the last time they actually won. So with this unit, and there's high expectations there. The Dallas Stars, we've talked about it. Remember, you know, their owner will criticize them publicly. He pays the players well. He runs a first-class organization, but he expects results and expects to win. And Dallas have fallen short in the, in the postseason. Put it this way, and I agree. Listen, I've been talking about Dallas for the last like two months or so, saying that's that's the team if I had to pick to win the West. But without mm-hmm. being stated, Kemp. If you're Dallas, it's not like Dallas is thinking, oh, you know what? This is going to be easy if we get the Vegas Golden Knights. Like, Dallas no. are going to have their hands full no matter who they play either way. Although, I think they will beat the Kings. I agree. The Kings, the thing about the Vegas Golden Knights, too, is, like, they play that game. Mark Stone's coming back. And I know we you talked about it yesterday. Their goaltending isn't as good. And it takes a lot to win the Stanley Cup. A lot of dominoes have to fall into place, a lot of pieces. But I'm going to say this. Their defense, Drew, uh, Gabe, is probably the deepest there. And Dallas, they got a lot of old guys on their team, too. Like, it's not going to be a cakewalk. They have to go in there, and they're deep. Andre hasn't even played his best hockey, but I like Dallas coming out. But, no, the Vegas Golden Knights, uh, they're a team. As we talked about, who do you want to play in this league? Every team who's making the playoffs, you can make a case for the underdog almost, except for maybe Washington. And some people think Washington can battle with the New York Rangers. So I think it's going to be a crazy playoff for sure. A lot of six and seven game series. All right. Well, now I'll tell you what, now that I know, and now that it's official that Vancouver gets Nashville, you look at the Nashville Predators, and if I'm Vancouver, I'd be like, you know what? I wish instead we would have gotten the LA Kings. Yes. Um, Because Nashville are a freaking load to deal with. Like this team, they're they're like since since February 17th, they have the second best record in the National Hockey League. Drew Martin steps up and in incognito, you know. uh, witness protection style. Parts unknown. He's got the glasses on. This, you know, Drew has different looks. There's dog track Drew. There's university Drew. There's uh, traffic court Drew. And as you see the picture that we have up uh, right now. <laughs> I like traffic court, Drew. Yeah, traffic like, court, Drew. That's when he wears like a sweater and stuff. Like, yeah, hey, exactly. judge, I'm a good kid. I'm innocent. Um, I'm innocent. 
<laughs> this is this is this is hey, I'm on the road and I'm a high roller, yeah. Drew. Look at it. Great, yeah, great exactly. shot. How you doing, Drew? Drew. Thanks, Gabe. I appreciate the props, my man. And uh yeah, that was a fun night in Vegas and uh the beers were flowing, the money was coming in. So uh yeah, glad glad you're pointing that out. And you know, you say traffic cop Drew. Uh I've done that a couple times as well. So uh if you can put on a collared shirt and smile, usually helps you out, my man. But always good to be on with you, Gabe. So where are you tonight? Where where are you at? I'm in a little place called Gainesville, Florida, next to the swamp here. Oh. And uh visiting my dad, fixing up some houses and uh betting I on thought some you were in Mexico, tonight. Costa Rica, or yeah. something <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, I'm in Gainesville. You're in Gainesville. <laughs> I love Drew. He's the so, best. Gator country. So, in other words, we had Paul Bobby on last night from the Philippines. Impeccable internet for forty minutes. So, in other words, the the internet in the Philippines is better than it is in Florida. Is that is that a oh, point that we're making here? Maybe if it's not coming through, I'll tell you this: the internet's better Pretty in Mexico than in a, a lot of places in in Florida. I know that. Yeah, in Mexico, Costa Rica's got great internet as well. All right, well, we'll get into some picks on the other side uh, with Drew. We'll see what he has to say about his Florida Panthers. Maybe he's got an inside scoop about the Florida Gators. Uh, We're going to talk college football later with Brett Beard. No rest for the wicked when it comes to college uh, football. NFL draft now just one week away. This is Sports Rage. At the Otani story, this uh, this interpreter, uh, Ipe, you know, clearly was a problem gambler. I mean, he would be identified as that and beyond. <laughs> now, there are a lot of others that are out there. The timing didn't seem great. It seemed slightly tone deaf in terms of, you know, maybe now isn't the time to say it. But the sentiment itself, you have to agree with. You, do, you know, there is not, there's only so much a sports betting company can do, right? Newswire, only on Sports Grid. Throwbacks in white have now become the main uniforms in black and green as well. Four day green. Your contracts will be higher in five years because the ratings will be through the roof, people. Listen to me. Play games at 7 o'clock. Get more ratings. Make more money. It's simple, but somehow they're imbeciles that make this playoff schedule. I can't figure it out. The early line only on Sports Grid. It's when he swung it easy at three-quarter golf swings, and he pretty much hit his number all the time. Dude, but when he hit something full, he hit it 20 yards over the greens at times. He's like, what are you doing? He's just smiley, happy, and a freakish athlete golf robot that's going to be right there when he majors for the next 10-plus years. It's amazing. Did you say he was smiling or smiley? Only on Sports Grid. They're still the best. They're still the champs. Everyone wants to crown the Celtics the champions, but that's not the way it works. They got to beat them. And, you know, they got to get through the East, which isn't going to be fun to begin with. Everyone thinks it's so automatic. If it's just Boris is kind of losing his power, if, if whatever his tactics have been, yeah, move on. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid.
You know, I just think I, we get Drew Martin on, and I just think college football. You know, whatever, whatever sport we're talking, whatever season it is, I can't help it, Drew. Think I, whatever, you, you and I have talked so much college football over the years, and it is spring practice time. Brett Beard's going to join us later as well, and uh, we'll get you caught up to date with some of these spring practices. But I'm fired up uh, for college uh, football this year, especially now. It's finally here, Drew. All the talk of it and stuff. It's it's going to be weird, but. Oklahoma's in the SEC. Texas are now in the SEC. Uh, USC's in the Big Ten. And you want you want craziness. How about this to start the season? Michigan are playing Texas. They're not even in the same conference. Like the college football season is going to be the craziest college football season ever that we've seen, like coming up this year. Absolutely, Gabe. It, it's a lot of moving parts. And to tell you the truth, as a sports better, sometimes moving parts and change is a good thing as a better to kind of find more quote unquote value. But I'll tell you, it is a lot to keep up with and it's here. Like you were kind of putting up on a tee there. We've talked about it for so long. And how does it change the landscape of the sport with 12 teams making the playoffs? And I would think it's going to help the bigger conferences, you know, the big 10, the sec getting more teams in, but at the same time, you know, the, the big 12 that they've expanded as well. And, getting some of these different teams playing each other out of conference. I don't, it, it probably is a good thing in the end Gabe, because you're, you're going to have more chances to kind of make up for it. If Michigan does drop that first game to tech or vice versa with a loss, with even two losses for those two teams, you're likely still to make the playoffs. That's why I don't think it hurts you as much as it could in the past and playing these big out of conference games early in the season. I would rather play Western Michigan. Personally. Me too. <laughs> like, Me too. Just, like, yeah, exactly. Nah, look, Akron, where are you? No, where the, are last, you? the last two years, Michigan had their softest non conference yeah. schedule yet ever. They made it to the playoffs both years. You don't get punished for it. That's a great point. If you're big, Bowling if Green, you and LB. We used yeah, to play Alabama and get, we, yeah, you know, we start the season losing 42 17 and we exactly. crush our conference. Like, <laughs> Can't we just ease into the schedule? Oh. Can't we nice and easy? No, man. <laughs> Look at Alabama. None of these teams do that. That's the whole thing. Oh, no. You play a bunch yeah. of Patsies. I don't like this new Michigan. thing. Oh, man, we're playing Texas. Michigan learned. We're playing Texas. That was, you're right. They learned last time. You're like, why don't we get UNLV on the schedule? Bowling Green yeah. sounds like a nice opponent. Yeah, and look what you did. Exactly. So follow Last the year we played uh, UNLV, yeah. Wyoming. Oh. We played some Mountain <laughs> West teams. You know what I'm saying? We, yeah, we I, stepped I'm, up I'm a little sure. bit, but we yeah, didn't yeah, like yeah. Ooh, yeah, it's Wyo- those Wyoming Cowboys. <laughs> Actually, next year we open with Fresno. We host Fresno. Uh, yeah, Fresno's the little, first ones up. They're no joke. A bit no, they're no joke, but Michigan should be able to put them in a pretzel, you'd think. So, what do you think the spread will be? Probably like, what, four touchdowns? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 28, 27 and a half. <laughs> no, it is Fresno. Yeah. No, 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 it is Fresno. No, so like, 24 and a half? No, I'm thinking 24 and a half is a good number. I don't know. Yeah, Michigan, what you, right. Just quickly, you know, Michigan don't have a quarterback. So we'll see about their yeah. quarterback situation. This is the best. We're making spreads for things that they had few days. Okay, yeah. It's like no, no, track. it's not crazy, yeah. Cam. There's college nope. football spreads up. Yeah, I know. Never stop. Oh, yeah. Spread. I mean, for... For this upcoming year, Gabe, and, and one thing about the scheduling, I agree with you. You know, you bring up playing like a MAC conference team for for Michigan. If you remember, as I'm speaking here in Gainesville, I believe it was like three decades since the Florida Gators played an out of conference game outside the state of Florida. And then, sure enough, when they did, they went on the road to Salt Lake City against Utah. And if you yeah. remember, they got blown yeah. out there early blown in the out. season. That it's blew like, my mind, Drew. They had never played. I saw that before. So again, they never played in the state of Utah before. They've never played in this time zone before. It was like this big thing. You stay in your bubble and it works. Uh, Four-two final score. Winnipeg wins. We hit our uh, in-game yes. under six and a half. Okay, so let's switch over. Let me ask you, Drew. You're in Florida, so the Miami Heat. They did cover last night for us. We ended up taking the Heat. The game went over the number. Jimmy Butler gets hurt because Kelly Oubre is a nut job and came flying in and landed on him. Jimmy Butler just posted on Instagram at him saying we're throwing hands uh, to him. So Jimmy B's not happy, but the Bulls were lighting it up last night, bro. They're playing with house money. Can the Heat beat the Bulls without Jimmy Butler, Drew, in your opinion? I I, I mean, I guess can. Maybe they can, Gabe, but I, I don't think they will. I, I, I think Jimmy Butler is too big of a piece of this unit, and he's he's that talented of a player. Losing him, particularly in the sport of basketball, in the NBA, how much these these 
big name guys matter to their teams and Jimmy Butler's one of them. No, I think it hurts them too much. I, 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 I would side with the bulls here, even though I'm a heat fan. What do you think, Cam? The Bulls are only getting – they're getting one and a half points right now. So it's basically a pick em. Can the Bulls go on the road and beat Miami at Miami? Tyler Hero is going to be the guy tomorrow. He's going to have to go yeah. off. Bam Adebayo is going to have to contribute offensively. It's, it's it, This always happens to the Heat. They have bad luck in the playoffs with injuries. And don't mm-hmm. forget, they brought in Terry Rozier, and this is one of the reasons why. It was like, all right, we'll have Terry Rozier. We're going to have some offensive depth now. At least we'll have a dude that can give us 20, 25. Rozier got hurt, so they don't have Rozier. What's your pick tomorrow, Cam? Bulls or Heat? Bulls. And I don't usually talk about these um, bets that are, you know, that, you know, certain teams with the over and under. If Miami wins, they've got to turn this into a slugfest. White of the Bulls is coming off an, a massive performance. He scores 20 at, 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 like every night. You know about DeRozan game. He's a ball machine. He's a machine. He's just, he scores. And Vucevic, like, it's a problem. Like, Miami's going to, the only way they win this game, in my opinion, I think the line is actually weird. I would have made Chicago even on the road, like, what would you think? Two and a half, three, without Butler, I don't know how many points he accounts for, but I think if Chicago wins, the game probably goes over, and if Miami wins, it's a slugfest. The Bulls don't play any defense. It is in Miami. Let's not, and also, the Bulls, mm-hmm. the Bulls are a different team in Chicago than they mm-hmm. are on the road. Eric Spolstra could also find Coach. a way to win one game against the, uh, the Chicago Bulls, not to mention, Drew, Alex Caruso is hurt as well. <laughs> which hurts them. It's unfortunate, which leads us into the Zion situation. So now the Pelicans have to play without Zion. What are your thoughts on that game tomorrow night, Drew, with the uh, the Pelicans and the Sacramento Kings? This is going to be a tight one. Um, I, I kind of lean with the home team, and you bring up the Zion injury, yeah, that hurts, but at the same time, they're catching one and a half. Um, the big easy, I feel like in this environment, it could be a tough, tough place to play. So, you know, maybe like a, a normal – kind of game there there wouldn't be the home the home arena type advantage but maybe in this situation uh they get up and going and catching the one in the hook i do think the uh short home dog is barking i would go with the pelicans yeah you know and i talked about this last night a bit but the heat losing jimmy butler is much more devastating to them than the pelicans losing zion despite the fact that zion's a badass and dropped 40 the other night Jimmy Butler is the heart and soul of their team. They're already shorthanded as it is, as they always are. Hero's kind of inconsistent. Abed, I, you know, Bam's good, but there's a ceiling in what he's able to give you. Not having Rozier hurts. Duncan Robinson's got a bad back. So the Heat have a lot of problems, but, and I brought it up, Drew, if you're the Pelicans, you played without Zion a lot over the last couple of years, right? It's not like, you know what I mean? If you're the Heat, you're like, damn, we got a day and suddenly we got to find points. And, you know, we're going to need a miracle here for someone to score for us. The Pelicans have done this before. Zion has always missed games. They're used to playing without him. The only thing I'll say is the other night, Brandon Ingram was really off. For whatever reason, he couldn't find a groove. His shots were short. He was throwing air balls, which is weird for him because this dude's a pure scorer. I mean, this guy is one of the best scorers in the NBA. And and CJ McCollum was terrible the other night as well. And he had a great last couple of weeks of the season. McCollum and Ingram are going to have to score tomorrow for them. But I still believe that the Pelicans can get it done. And I don't really want to get in front of the Bulls either, uh, the Heat tomorrow either. I just don't fully trust the Bulls yeah. on the road, guys. No, that's a fair yeah, point, I trust Gabe. the Pelicans I mean, more. Me too. Yeah, I, I, I trust the Pelicans more as well than I do the Heat. And I liked your breakdown in terms of Jimmy Butler mattering more than Zion and a big reason why it's not only the points yes that's part of it but it's like when you watch the teams play and the offense throwing you know flowing through certain players I mean Jimmy Butler is is not yeah. as big but just about as big as it well, gets he's the one walking team. the ball up the court for the heat he's the one that's playing defense exactly. like Zion mm-hmm. they're just losing points and if anything too it just opens up shots <laughs> for McCollum and Ingram right they get they get they get to shoot more they just have to hit these shots um so Saturday, the, the 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 backup center on the Sixers, for whatever reason, said that the Sixers wanted the Knicks instead of the Celtics because it's an easier matchup for them, yeah, okay. which, you know, I guess it's true. But you're a backup center. You shouldn't be talking at all publicly. The Knicks are three-point favorites against the Sixers Saturday night. The Lakers are now getting seven and a half. Suns and T-Wolves. T-Wolves are laying one and a half to the Suns. And the Cleveland Cavaliers are laying four and a half. Drew, if I had to ask you, 
you can pick one NBA team to take plus the points or minus the points on Saturday. Which one would it be? Which game would it be? I, I feel like it's a square play uh, just because a lot of kind of mainstream pr- people would probably go this route. But how about that Lakers plus seven plus a touchdown? There You're isn't even the mind. seven in the hook available, man. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's there's a hook out in, there man. hooking us all in right now, Drew. Like, yeah. Give me the lay. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> yeah, for me, I feel our, if I we're fishers. for me best best bet if I was like all right all day on Saturday you got the Magic Cavs game Suns T Wolves Sixers Knicks Lakers Nuggets. I'm gonna bet. I have I have confidence that the T Wolves will win this game on Saturday. And I think the Lakers cover the spread, Drew. Those are the two. And I agree with you. I think the Nuggets are going to win the series, but the Lakers, like, they're going to be like four and three and three and four and five point games and stuff. I think they're all close games. <laughs> Total agreeance, Gabe. And I love the phrase, hey, there's a hook out there. It's reeling me in, man. That was perfect yeah, on the Lakers. Plus be a, let's hope hook. it gets we, up to eight guys. Keep on betting yeah. Denver, guys. You're going to give us eight. Lakers have let's no hope. chance. Let's hope we catch the fish instead of the hooks in our lip. That's what I worry about, Morency. I know it seems very lucrative. A lot of points. The Knicks is Knicks. That's no easy series for the Knicks, man. No. the Otani story, this uh, this interpreter, uh, Ipe, you know, clearly was a problem gambler. I mean, he would be identified as that and beyond. <laughs> now, there are a lot of others that are out there. The timing didn't seem great. It seemed slightly tone deaf in terms of, you know, maybe now isn't the time to say it. But the sentiment itself, you have to agree with. You, do, you know, there is not, there's only so much a sports betting company can do, right? Newswire, only on Sports Grid. Throwbacks in white have now become the main uniforms in black and green as well. Four game green. Your contracts will be higher in five years because the ratings will be through the roof, people. Listen to me. Play games at 7 o'clock. Get more ratings. Make more money. It's simple, but somehow they're imbeciles that make this playoff schedule. I can't figure it out. The early line only on Sports Grid. It's when he swung it easy at three-quarter golf swings, and he pretty much hit his number all the time. Dude, but when he hit something full, he hit it 20 yards over the greens at times. He's like, what are you doing? He's just smiley, happy, and a freakish athlete golf robot that's going to be right there winning majors for the next 10-plus years. It's amazing. Did you say he was smiling or smiley? Only on Sports Grid. They're still the best. They're still the champs. Everyone wants to crown the Celtics the champions, but that's not the way it works. They got to beat them. And, you know, they got to get through the East, which isn't going to be fun to begin with. Everyone thinks it's so automatic. If it's just Boris is kind of losing his power, if, if whatever his tactics have been, yeah, move on. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. (laughs) 
<clears throat> this is Sports Rage. I am Renzi. I've got some uh, uh, Caitlin Clark props and some WNBA futures I want to get to after. And Caitlin Clark cashed in large uh, today. And remember, she got offered $5 million to play in uh, eight big three games against the men. And at the time, we all said, including myself, I'll admit, I was like, man, she's got to take the five mil. It's a lot of money. Play a couple of basketball games. But evidently, it's not a lot of money if you're Caitlin Clark. She just got $20 million, Drew, from uh, from Nike. She had a $20 million shoe contract. She's going to have her own signature shoe. And that's a lot of money. Like, NBA players don't get that. Like, some, you know, there's a, a few superstars that get, like, big money for a shoe deal in the NBA. But, I, you know, that's why, like, uh, people are often surprised. <laughs> Like, uh, LeVar, like, the ball's father was all, like, insulted and stuff. And Nike offered his son, like, a million dollars or something. They said, we'll give you, like, a million and a half a year. And he was like, you're crazy. We want $200 million or $600 million. And they basically told him, you're not Michael Jordan. Like, we're not not giving you, you know what I mean, that much money. $20 million for Caitlin Clark, too. She's cashing in. And you're going to see WNBA betting is going to get bigger than ever this year as well. And there's going to be all these people that look down on it uh, over the years suddenly going to be selling picks mm. for this stuff. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, Caitlin Clark, 20 million bucks. It's always tough with the branding deals, Um, you, you know, for the big companies. Are they getting their money back in the marketing, all of that? It's interesting to see. And, and is this going to carry over the college basketball, women's college basketball to the <laughs> WNBA? I find it fascinating, Gabe. I, I have my, you know, I guess worries uh, pumping the brakes a little bit if it does to the full extent, but at the same time, who knows? It, you know, the predictions are tough. No, you're a stock guy, Drew. In the future, what's that? They're they're you're a stock guy. They're a buy-in <laughs> stock. Mm-hmm. Even before Caitlin Clark, their revenue went from 2021 was 60 million dollars a year. The WNBA last year, 2023 was 220 million dollars. Their revenue. That's before Caitlin what- Clark. Right, the and Las Vegas Aces are selling out buildings in Las Vegas every night. They sold out their season tickets without Caitlin Clark before she was in the league. Sabrina Ionescu and the, the New York Liberty, super successful without Caitlin Clark. She's just going to like add to this right now. It'll just continue to grow. Yeah, it's tough to argue with that. I mean, you're right. The Aces in Las Vegas, that is hitting it. You, you know, and... I, I almost go back to like looking at the books. Where's this revenue coming from? Is it coming from, you know, the media deals? And are the eyeballs really getting there? Or is this going to go away because, you know, in order to broadcast the sport, you have to pay the money up front and then you have to eat that contract if it doesn't work. Um, but I, I'm with you. Hey, I'm not shorting the stock in the WNBA. But at the same time, like, it, 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 it's not like the the blue chip stock that we're for sure is going to make it and in 10 years be that much bigger. Are you that confident that it's going to happen, yes. Gabe? It could. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Yes, I am. Yeah. Sports and pretty women sell. Sure. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not like yeah, sure. it's not rocket science. Like uh, moving mm-hmm. forward, women are taking over the sports market. And I, I think it'll just sort of continue in this um, – in, in this vein, and it'll continue. You know, it was amazing. Like I said, like you got 2.7 million viewers, Drew, of the WNBA draft the other night. 2.7 million viewers. Now, to put in context, the the NBA draft got 3.4 <laughs> million viewers last year. So, like, they, they pretty much did what the, w, what, the, what the NBA did. And to put in context... The NHL draft was on ESPN, and it got 600,000 viewers. Major League wow. Baseball's draft got 700,000 viewers. Yeah. The WNBA Crushing. got 2.7 million. Right? Yeah. So it's like, You're you right, start man. to do the math here. And it's like, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they're bigger than no, we are. So that, you know what I mean? Me and Red Sea. Like, that's bro- Baseball, their draft, though, it's a, you know what it is, too, Gabe? It's the way... You formulate the the draft too. There's something about a basketball draft and an NFL draft in comparison. Like you know the way the hockey and baseball drafts. It just well, it's you know what the like, problem is, Cam. People college. don't know who they are. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, the NFL, these guys don't people know these can debate players. Caleb yeah, Williams. Exactly. People can't argue. Yes. Oh, that right yes. fielder from Vanderbilt. No way yeah. he should be the second pick. Yeah. Like, exactly. You know what I mean? People it's don't like, have that. People same. don't even know who Paul Steens is. You guys, yeah, guys exactly. college baseball. 
No, it's a good point. Even all Russian guys. We follow and, yeah, hockey. It's tough. Yeah. I look at the draft. I'll know like out of the first round, you know I'll know them? like uh, maybe ten guys, twelve guys. Yeah. But like, there's all these dudes from you know Finland yeah. and this, and some sixteen year old kid from Sweden. I don't know who the hell it's these tough. kids are. So That's a good point. Baseball yeah. though. Baseball's done a much better job, Drew. Over the last couple of years, baseball like is doing the red carpet and the concerts. Like they're trying to make their draft hip, and college baseball stock is on the rise as well. Just point blank. Yeah, college baseball's mm-hmm. never been as popular as it is. Okay, so uh, back to the uh, back to the NBA. Saturday, you said you like the Lakers plus the points. And what about those early games? Anything catch your eye? On the uh, on the NBA slate, no. I I mean I haven't like gone through and uh, peppered the board at, at all in the NBA, but uh, I, I mean the Lakers plus the seven in the hook. I think I'm going to get uh, hooked in, hopefully reeled in here with a uh, a Lakers staying within the number game. What about your Florida Panthers taking on the Tampa Bay yeah. Lightning? An all Florida matchup. This is going to be a battle. I think the Florida Panthers survive, but I think Tampa's going to give them all they can handle, Drew. I mean, I, I, I'm with you, and it, particularly when they have to go play over in Tampa. I've been in that little in that in that Lightning uh, arena. That place gets rocked. The Thunderdome, oh, you know, more. Oh yeah, the Thunderdome, more raucous than it does in Sunrise, unfortunately. And I'm a Panthers fan, admitting that. But um, so I think they're going to have a little bit of uh, an edge when it goes over to Tampa and, and laying what minus two hundred. I saw that's the Panthers, the Cats as the favorite. I think that's a little bit too pricey. I I, I do like the Florida Panthers to win it. To, you know, they are the team from Florida. Let's be serious here. It's the Florida Panthers owning the state of Florida. I like them. Tampa's um, in but Florida. Florida. <laughs> yeah, but they're called well, Tampa. More cups? There's a reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. There's, there's be a reason. Honest. <laughs> if I lived in Florida, that's where I would live, Tampa. That's that's yeah. like, that would be my, that would be my city, Drew. Tampa. I, I don't, I don't blame you. Um, I Look, metal, I'm a guy from Fort Lauderdale, metal, South clubs. Florida. Yeah, like yeah, the, for sure. T- Tampa is like the partying. It's a hardcore town, like I, you know, compared to the other ones. So I wouldn't fit in yeah. South Beach. I'm not a Miami Vice guy. No, <laughs> well, I'm also, yeah, yeah. Like, also so like from down boots the on the ground, <laughs> pastel suit yeah, on. From, so, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna go hang hey, with Joe Ramirez. Uh, yeah, it's, you do have that nice Cuban shirt though. That your your Cuban wedding shirt looks great. That's a Miami winner. Yeah, I'll fit in right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's do a major yes. league. Uh, let's do a major league uh, baseball. Stock watch here a little bit. Yay. And I learned my lesson this year, and I talk about this, Drew. It's amazing. The Kansas City Royals, we knew. We talked about the Royals like in their offseason coming into this year. Not surprised the Royals. I'll, I, I'll be honest. I didn't think the Royals would be five games on 500. Uh, this really, but not surprised. But the Cleveland Indians guys are up $713 right now after 19 games, Drew. And it's amazing, isn't it? This team. Man, I can't name all nine starters on this team. <laughs> I can't. And here, here they are with a thirteen and six record. They lose Bieber, and it doesn't matter. They keep winning baseball games. It's crazy. They're up seven hundred and thirteen dollars. KC are up three sixty eight. Detroit are up two dollars. Minnesota are down four seventy three. White Sox are burning money at three and fifteen, down nine hundred and eighty dollars. Yankees are up six seventy four. Baltimore are up two seventy two. Uh, Tampa, three dollars. Um, other, there's no real other hot, hot teams. The most profitable team in baseball so far, Drew, this year, the Cleveland Guardians. How about that? Yeah, all their pitching too. I mean, Shane Bieber's out, and they're still able to pull this off. As much as I hate to admit it, and plus they're ten yeah. and three on the road, Gabe. They're winning um, road yeah. games, which is tough in MLB. I'll tell they you, have Gabe, the most Canadians on their team too. They got the Naylor brothers from my hometown. These guys are amazing, Gabe. Those guys are wicked. Watch out for. And we should note, they played an extended series in Oakland already. That's why <laughs> they rocked yeah. up like they have had a pretty. They've had <laughs> yeah, a favorable. Uh, they've had a favorable uh, start. Dodgers are yes. down two hundred and forty nine bucks right now. San Diego are up one fifty nine. Arizona down three fifty seven. A little bit overvalued. Arizona. San Francisco in action right now as we speak. I was looking at the weekend series, as Drew. We got some pretty cool ones, including uh, the Mets, who have turned it around after the uh, the slow start. They've been on fire. Yamamoto gets the Mets, uh, Manaya and Yamamoto tomorrow. Chavez Ravine, Toronto's on the West Coast against San Diego. What do you think about uh, the weekend baseball slate and series, Drew? 
Yeah, how about that one in the Blue Jays uh, at, at, out on the West Coast here? And I'll tell you what, there'll be a lot of Blue Jays fans at that game um, in San Diego for whatever reason. A lot of Canadians in South Florida. Um, I kind of like them, plus the 105. They've been a little bit overvalued, what, down about a unit. Um, I got one circled here. I mean, Boston, the Red Sox, as injured as they are, it's a little happy hour special in Pittsburgh, PNC. Seeing a, an opening line here at Pittsburgh, minus 125. I was looking to go against the Red Sox. Um, Oakland has also been a little bit surprising, playing better baseball than a, a lot of people would have thought. McKenzie's on the hill for Cleveland, so that's kind of an under-the-radar one. But um, I would be pumping the brakes on laying, what, minus 180 with Cleveland. I would actually look towards Oakland. I don't know if the Guardians can keep this up, Gabe. I mean, this is a heck of a run here. And I got to admit, I have an under-season win total ticket on Cleveland in my pocket. So it really kind of uh, is eking me that they have the best record in baseball. Um, and then I, I'm never going to argue with anybody looking to fade this uh, Chicago White Sox team, man. This team is brutal. And they're on the road here in Philadelphia. A little bit pricey on the Phillies, but still I'm surprised it's under minus 160. So I got a Turnbull in the Phillies circled as maybe a best bet on tomorrow's slate game. Two years in a row, Drew. Two years ago, I went big on the Cleveland Guardians under. It was like 76 and a half. And uh, they ended up winning like 92 games or something stupid like that. <laughs> and um, then last yeah. year, I was like, well, they can't do it again. And they did. So this year, I learned my lesson. I was like, no, no. I didn't I didn't even talk about the Guardians before the year. I was like, I was like no, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not going anywhere near that team. And I've even told people, I said, hey, be careful with them. And everyone says, oh, they suck. They don't have anybody. Yeah, yeah, they never have anybody, and here, here they are still, uh, right now once again. So, uh, the Dodgers get the Mets uh, tomorrow. Yeah. That'll be a fun series at Chavez Ravine. It'll be an electric uh, atmosphere uh, there. I do think there'll be some runs actually in that Toronto San Diego game tomorrow night, guys. Total is eight and a half. I could see that being a home run fest tomorrow. San Diego are hitting the ball hard right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, we'll see if the Blue Jays can keep up offensively, but I think I think the over eight and a half is the play in the Blue Jays and uh, San Diego game, guys. Agreed. Yeah, I I don't disagree with you. I mean, I could I, I love this Toronto lineup and the Padres uh, kind of lukewarm on their lineup. I mean, Petco more of a pitcher's park, and it is kind of you know what six forty local time start, but um. Hey, eight in the hook, the Blue, it's not that big of a total. Yeah. I, the Blue Jays I are still doing Blue Jay game. things, though, Gabe. We've talked about this. Like, you got to ice games and stuff like that. Like, I know they've been better, but it's just unbelievable the games they give away. And over the time, it'll catch up with you. Like, the Yankees came back against them. That would have been a great opportunity to kick them again, and they let them come back late. They do it all the time. Well, it, was a good, it was a good homestand. They won, uh, they won six games. They won six games on the homestand. That's baseball. They're not going to win every game. They were they had a three game win streak going. They couldn't uh, they couldn't nail down the fourth. We'll see what happens on there. Look at the Dodgers. The Dodgers are only twelve and nine right now. Uh, it's a long season. Thanks, Drew. Later, Drew. Thanks, boys. Catch those tickets. the Otani story, this uh, this interpreter, uh, Ipe, you know, clearly was a problem gambler. I mean, he would be identified as that and beyond. <laughs> now, there are a lot of others that are out there. The timing didn't seem great. It seemed slightly tone deaf in terms of, you know, maybe now isn't the time to say it. But the sentiment itself, you have to agree with. You, do, you know, there is not, there's only so much a sports betting company can do, right? Newswire, only on Sports Grid. Throwbacks in white have now become the main uniforms in black and green as well. Four game green. Your contracts will be higher in five years because the ratings will be through the roof, people. Listen to me. Play games at 7 o'clock. Get more ratings. Make more money. It's simple, but somehow they're imbeciles that make this playoff schedule. I can't figure it out. The Early Line, only on Sports Grid. It's when he swung it easy at three-quarter golf swings, and he pretty much hit his number all the time. Dude, but when he hits something full, 
He hit it 20 yards over the greens at times. He's like, what are you doing? Jesus, smiley, happy, and a freakish athlete golf robot that's going to be right there winning majors for the next 10 plus years. It's amazing. Did you say he was smiling or smiley? Only on Sports Grid. I mean, they're still the best. They're still the champs. Everyone wants to crown the Celtics the champions, but that's not the way it works. They got to beat them. And, you know, they got to get through the East, which isn't going to be fun to begin with. Everyone thinks it's so automatic. If it's just Boris is kind of losing his power, if if whatever his tactics have been, yeah, move on. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Let's roll. This is Sports Rage. Griffin Murphy is going to step up and in straight from the Strip of Las Vegas, Nevada, in a couple of moments. I've been a big Victor Wembanyama fan for a few years before he came in uh, to the league uh, even. I like his style, and he's a humble kid despite the fact that he's like a global superstar, and he's only going to get bigger. And anybody knows, you know, I've been a fan of his, and people who have been watching or listening to me know I you know I'm not a big Drake guy to be honest, right? Like uh, I find Drake just to be annoying, and um, I got in trouble once. I got told by security to shut up at a Raptor game once because I was yelling at Drake, telling Drake to shut up because Drake was egging on John Wall. <laughs> so it was a it was a it was a That's chain amazing. effect. I was like eight yeah. rows behind Drake, and Drake was like chirping the Wizards, and yeah. the Wizards were like keep talking Drake, and they were hitting Drake. shots. And I was like, yeah. yo, Drake, you're not on the court. Stop talking smack to them. And then they told over, hey, don't don't talk to Drake. Yeah, like his security yeah, yeah, dudes yeah, were looking yeah, at me yeah, and stuff. Like, <laughs> security was like, down. hey, yeah, uh, we're going to ask you to leave if you bother Drake again. I was like, I wasn't bothering. Yeah. I'm going to tell him to shut yeah. up. Tell him to shut right? up. So, <laughs> so Drake uses these basketball players, I find. So this is a story here. Drake, uh, J.J. Reddick told it. Drake uh, wanted Victor Weminyana to come on stage with him at a concert. And... Um, it was in Austin, Texas. When Binyama said, yeah, sure, I'll do it, uh, but uh, I want all my teammates to come on stage with me. Drake's nice. manager in camp was like, no, 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 just you, not your teammates, just you. And then he said, then Ooh. I don't want to do it. And he didn't do it. So, th- so that's so good. Get, yeah, that's, that's good great. for Wemben Yama. A lot of kids would be like, well, you guys aren't big enough to go on stage with Drake. He doesn't care. Yeah. He's like, I don't care for me, but it'd be cool for them. So, right, that's the type of kid he is, though. That's why people love this kid. He's not an egomaniac. For well, like, another a thing is, like I said, he's he's a big star. Part two of that story, why if you're Drake's manager, let the whole damn team come on and let Wemmin Yama come on there. So, you, what, you're canceling the gig because it's, it's everybody? That's weak as well. No, because he doesn't want to be associated with the loser Spurs. He just wants to be associated with Wemmin Yama's plan. That's not Drake. Yeah, man. that's him. 